it. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the resurrection and uh, Revelation 20 and um, the thousand years mentioned in Revelation 20. Now it's interesting because all these people here believe that Jesus reigns a thousand years. The problem obviously is that Jesus reigns forever. So there is no thousand year reign of Jesus. Yet all these people are believing it because they heard somebody else say it and they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. Alright, and here's another example, and this is particularly interesting. Alright, you notice the title, Thousand Year Millennial Reign of Christ. Alright, so, um, of course, this idea is that after Jesus comes, there's going to be a thousand year reign of Christ. That's not in the Bible at all. And it's particularly interesting here that the name of their channel or their podcast is Kings and Priests. It's astonishing, really, that in Revelation 20, you've got, uh, it specifically mentions, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So these guys are able to identify that they are kings and priests right now, but then they're not able to put the pieces together in Revelation 20, even though it specifically says they shall be priests of God. They're not able to connect the dots. Why? Because they don't believe what the Bible says. They believe what somebody else says the Bible says, but they do not believe what the Bible says. It's astonishing. All right, isn't it crazy too how, you know, we live in this world where so many people are so deceived? Well, that's exactly what Jesus told us was going to happen, and it is happening and the evidence for it is overwhelming. All right, so again, with these guys, I'm going to let them talk. All right. Verification on this subject. Now, hold on a second. Because it's on, on YouTube right now. For personal ask, ask in Revelation 25. All right, I apologize. So I thought there was, I thought I saw right there. <laughs> That's what I was looking for right here. So Linda's got a question. I want to answer that question, and then I want to answer this question down here, but first I'll let these guys talk. Alright, last clarification on this subject before we move on, because it's on, on YouTube right now. First and last, ask, in Revelation 25, uh, chapter 20, verse 5, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years had ended. This is the first resurrection. Uh, who will those be? Um... When it's talking about the first resurrection, when, when you go through the Bible, uh, there are terms that are used for the resurrection. So, uh, without making this a big old long thing, let me, let me give you an example here. In uh, John chapter 5, Jesus says, um, uh, As the Father has life in himself, this is in verse 26, um, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he's the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So as you go through the Bible, there, there is this phrasing, resurrection of life, resurrection of condemnation, the resurrection. Alright, so let me just draw a parallel for those that are eager to learn. Alright, so again, here in John chapter 5, um, Jesus says, and shall come forth, let's see, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. All right, and so also let's draw a parallel in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, 
where it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Alright, this is the parallel. This is talking about the same same thing. Alright, and so let's we'll let them keep talking. Direction of the just, the resurrection of the unjust, uh, the first resur resurrection, and the second resurrection. And so in chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 5... Alright, so I gotta, I gotta pause that because he's now wanting to say that what, these are two resurrections. They're not two resurrections. They're two kinds of resurrections, but they happen at the same time. When it says, but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished, this is the first resurrection. All right, so let's, we, we got to look at this. All right, we got to break this down. Because uh, it's quite apparent that this guy, the, this guy here on the right, has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. None whatsoever. And again, I just want to say that if you don't know what you're talking about, then don't talk about it. All right, if you're absolutely clueless, just keep your mouth shut. Really, because all you're doing here is you're repeating what you heard somebody else say. All right, and I know it. Because what you're saying is not in the Bible at all. All right, so the Bible talks about the first resurrection. All right, here in verse 5 and in here in verse 6. All right, this is Revelation 20, verses 5 and 6. The first resurrection is Jesus Christ. There can be no mistake about it. There is no wiggle room here. It's him. Jesus is the resurrection. He straight up says, I am the resurrection. All right, and if you don't know that, then God help you, but uh, for... For uh, oops, for time's sakes, I'm going to try to keep this simple. All right. So in 1 Corinthians 15, it says here that... Um, oh, where do we start here? Oh my goodness, we could start... Um, for if the dead rise not, then it is not Christ raised and if Christ be not raised your faith is in vain ye are yet in your sins then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are all men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Okay, so to understand that, it's very simple. Jesus is the resurrection. He is the first fruits of them that slept. We that are born of the Spirit of God are partakers of His resurrection. Jesus has laid down His life. He has raised Himself from the dead. And he has ascended to heaven and promised to return for us. See, he has led 
the way. All right. He is our example. He has shown us the way, and He has taken the way, and we that are born of God follow Him. So when He returns, we will <clears throat> be resurrected, and we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, and we shall uh, ascend up to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. All right. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the same same event. And the real, there can't be any mistake about it. There shouldn't be any doubt about it. Notice this here where it says, First the dead in Christ. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. All right, so they're resurrected, and we are caught up together with them. We are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We are. We go from. We are transformed into our glorified bodies. Okay. All right, and then. We're lifted up in the air, our enemies gathered at our feet, and um, fire comes down from God and devours them. All right, so when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so there's no more death after this. This is it. It's over. All right, then we're set back down on earth where there's a new earth and new heavens right, where there's no more death no more pain no more sorrow no more crying all those things will be done away with all right, this is not a thousand year period this is everlasting life all right. now this clown this deceiver this liar on the right hand side and there's really no other way to describe it he's deceiving and he's lying and he's ignorant direction what he's talking about is these are the righteous dead these are these are these people are part of the first resurrection but it doesn't just happen at one point because obviously Jesus is righteous and he was raised from the dead and those people in Matthew chapter uh, 27 verse 52 they were righteous and they were raised from the dead and then you're going to have the rapture of the church they'll be righteous and they'll be raised from the dead and then you have this resurrection of these people who have died during the tribulation they're righteous and they'll be raised from the dead and then we were just talking about those who uh, will die um, uh, following Jesus during the millennium they would be righteous all right so first of all I just had to make a point here and none of those, none of us that are saved are righteous ourselves. We are only considered righteous because Jesus Christ is the righteous. Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God, and because he is so pure, so clean, all of his cleanness, pureness, makes us pure and clean all right in other words he abides in us and we abide in him it's not our own righteousness but it's his righteousness which god sees when he looks upon those of us that are saved those of us that are born of the spirit of god righteous also and so no matter what and, and then you're talking about the Old Testament saints also, all the Old Testament believers. Uh, whenever they're raised from the dead, they're righteous also. And so they are part of the first resurrection or the resurrection of the just or the re resurrection. Uh, again, hey, this, this just drives me crazy because to suggest that these guys, you know, the Old Testament saints or even all of us that are believers, whoever, whatever category he's trying to sell, we are not the first resurrection. 
I mean, to suggest we are the first resurrection nullifies the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, which means you are nullifying the death of Jesus. All right, and there's all kinds of problems with that, but it's as if this guy has put no thought into what he's saying at all. He's just trying to recall what he heard somebody else say of the righteous so that's the first resurrection it goes on and says blessed and holy uh, and, and, hol and it's, it's astonishing really how could you say that we are the first resurrection when the bible is crystal clear here in first corinthians 15 it's amazing how clear it is every man in his own order christ the first fruits so he has to be the first resurrection there's no way to get around it I mean, even Jesus Christ himself says, I am the resurrection. Does he not? I thought he did. I th wasn't there somewhere in the Bible where he says, yeah, right there. John 11, verse 25. Jesus saith unto her, said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live now remember that verse right there and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection and that's all those groups of people who are raised at different times jesus is the first resurrection both mentions here and blessed and holy are we that has part in his resurrection right now the second death has no power over us right now he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live the second death has no power over those of us that are born of god right now right now we are priest of god and of christ right now Right. you can go back to oops go back to Exodus 19 where God tells Moses to tell the children of Israel that they are a kingdom of priest and a holy nation all right and then again uh, confirmed that we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are the kingdom of priest we are the holy nation of of God right now and which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God all right right now we are a royal priesthood we are kings and priests unto God right now and um, we reign with Christ right now and I don't know how you can rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now. All right. And we know for sure there are different times because there's already some of them that are raised from the dead. All right, so I got to get to this. So there are already some of them raised from the dead. So when Jesus... Um, when he came up out of the grave, oh my goodness, I don't want to guess at this. Um, does it actually say resurrected out of the graves? Yeah, there it is. Ha, I got lucky. Okay, so in Matthew 27, verse 53, there's, there's this mention of people coming out of their graves and going into the holy city and appearing unto many <clears throat> all right now it's important <laughs> all right okay let's read those two verses i guess okay so this is when um jesus oh let's see how do we say um, and, okay, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. All right, so that's when Jesus died. 
And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. All right, so just knowing that, understanding that, these people, the saints that came out of the graves, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. They witnessed to many. All right, this is a. Uh, they are witnessing of the events that have taken place. Essentially, a, a witnessing that Jesus has uh, resurrected. All right, this is a foreshadowing of things to come. All right. Now, it's important to understand that these guys that came up out of the graves, they did not ascend to heaven. They did not transform into their glorified bodies. After they witnessed, after their mission was completed, they went back into the grave. That's the only conclusion you can draw. Now, you got to consider this. All right. If you're still having any doubts, the body of the saints. All right. So was David a saint? Was is David going to be saved? And you know, I've had this uh, uh, conversation many times relating re regarding David and uh, him going to heaven. And the Bible is crystal clear: David is not ascended into the heavens. <clears throat> All right, and I just read you this right here: Christ the first fruits; afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. All right, and then also in John chapter three, Jesus says, "No man has ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven." So. None of these guys in Matthew 27 that came up out of their graves ascended to heaven. All right, there's a resurrection where then we see these miracles where Jesus um, resurrect. You know, there's what Lazarus that was dead. He stinketh. I mean, he the guy stunk. Right? You remember that story here in John 11? No, not that one. Oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah. I'm, I apologize. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, yes, in John chapter 11. Oh, um, goodness sakes. Am I remembering the name correctly? Right here. Let's see. And Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, which is the brother of Martha. Am I remembering that correctly? And then um, Jesus came and um, demanded that Lazarus come up out of the grave. The guy was dead, and he stunk, and he came back to life after being dead four days. So it's amazing. It really is. It's incredible. But Lazarus, I mean, he was resurrected from the dead, but he did not ascend to heaven. He was not transformed into his glorified body. He just came up out of the dead. That's it. All right. See, so he's called back from the dead. That's it. That's not in the, what we read there in Matthew 27. That's all that happened to these guys. Right. Same thing. They came up out of their graves, just like we read about Lazarus, right? These guys, they just came up out of their graves. They witnessed, appeared to many, all right? And they did not, uh, you know, they were not transformed into their glorified bodies. If they did, they'd still be here today. They didn't do that, all right? They did not ascend to heaven. Alright, 
just like what we read in 1 Corinthians 15. Christ, the first fruits, and then afterward Christ at his coming. All right, so these guys, just like uh, numerous other examples, we can get into <clears throat> if somebody is really wanting to have that conversation. We could use some Old Testament examples as well. But the bottom line is nobody has ascended to heaven but Jesus. He's the only one. And so that would answer Linda's question that these guys, they, they rose up out of the grave, they witnessed, and they went back into the grave until the point of time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. There's no other way to teach that. Okay? There's no other way to teach that truthfully. All right? These guys, they lie. And they lie because they don't know. They just make stuff up. Uh, along with Jesus. Um, over such the second death has no power. And the second death is defined as those who've been raised uh, from the dead and are at the great white throne um, okay. judgment and as it says in verse 14 of the same chapter uh, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire this is the second death that means everybody that was dead at that point are cast in the lake of fire that's the second death so that's the resurrection of the unrighteous or the resurrection of the unjust right so well uh, Right now, we that are born of God, judgment has been given to us. We are kings of God. Well, we read in Revelation 1, he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Alright, so let me, I, I feel like I have to show you. Alright, for anybody that really wants to understand this, in Revelation chapter 1, has made us kings and priests unto God and his father so in revelation 20 verse 4 and i saw thrones that's talking about us we are kings we have thrones in heaven heavenly thrones and we sit upon them and judgment was is has already been given to us because once we are born of god that's it the judgment has been given to us we are saved sealed secured sanctified forever nothing can take that away no nothing can change that at all the judgment has already been given to us now for those that are not born of God when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and they will be gathered at our feet and there will be judgment given to them and the judgment will be the second death all right that it's pretty simple all right, so either you believe or you don't believe. There is no other judgment of God. <clears throat> All right, and so the judgment at the end of the world is essentially uh, the judgment of death, right? And so we have an opportunity to be set free now before the end of the world because once it's the end of the world, there are no more opportunities to be set free. And right now is your opportunity to be set free by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just. And, and so two, two sets, you, you might say it this way, two sets of resurrections. Uh, well, with the resurrection of the unjust is just one resurrection. But with the resurrection of the just, God does this a, a number of times and uh, uh, finishes off uh, with the uh, with the righteous, and they are part of the first resurrection, whether they were raised at the time of Christ, or whether they're raised at the time of the rapture, or whether they're raised at the time. No. Of uh, the resurrection of the uh, believers who died during the tribulation period. That's all the first resurrection. All right. So again, there is no seven-year tribulation period. There is no thousand-year 
reign of Jesus Christ. This stuff is ridiculous. You're getting your doctrines from a Hollywood movie and not from the Bible. All right. Is that clear as mud? Clear as mud. <laughs> there you have it. Clear as mud. That That's about the only true thing that the, the, these guys said, huh? Clear as mud. Okay, so that's, that's it. That's all I got. Um, and one last note here. I'm going to try to respond and reply to every single comment. So I want you guys to uh, share your thoughts and, um, you know, right or wrong just you know share your thoughts and uh, let's talk about it okay